Greetings, everyone, and thank you so much for coming, staying, and listening to me talk about Ladies of Landsat. And a huge thank you to the Open Data Cube conference organizers for inviting us to speak about our organization. I'm Dr. Kate Vickis. I'm research faculty at University of Massachusetts Amherst in the United States, and I've been a remote sensing ecologist for about 10 years now. I'm here to talk to you because I'm the co-founder of Ladies of Landsat and the creator of the Ladies of Landsat Twitter. I'd like to frame this talk around our very simple but powerful mission statement, and that's to make the field of remote sensing more equitable and inclusive for underrepresented scientists. The theme of this session is EO at the edge, and while I really wish that inclusion and represent representation weren't cutting edge concepts for this community, they unfortunately still very much are. Ladies of Landsat is here to create a united front towards edging EO closer to equality. So how'd we get started? My picture is up here, but really the concept of this group has been growing for as long as Earth observation has been a field of study. I started out in my PhD program pretty lonely and craving a community to belong to that just didn't exist for me in my everyday studies or when I traveled around the world to remote sensing and Earth observation conferences. I kept asking myself, where are all the women? The term Ladies of Landsat first entered my vocabulary when I was at a conference in Chile with my lab mate, Jody Vogler, and we were both giving each other confidence boosts before our respective talks during the conference. We kept saying, don't be nervous, you're a Lady of Landsat. And what we both discovered was that that simple term, identifying as a Lady of Landsat, gave us the confidence and the spark to be able to move through the conference knowing that we deserved to be there and that our ideas were heard and respected. I opened the Ladies of Landsat Twitter in January of 2018 and went public with the page at a Landsat Science team meeting. At first, I hesitated sharing this group with the community at large for fear of judgment or who knows what, but the night before it went live, I was having a really tough time with life in general, as many of us do with our graduate careers, and my PhD advisor took me aside asked me to get vulnerable and share what was going on. He listened, told me how special I was and that it was all gonna be okay. I thought, wow, everyone needs this in their life and women especially are at risk of never having that support or community or safe space to share. I really wanted Ladies of Landsat to be all three for women and others around the world. In June of 2018, I traveled to Ireland for a Google Earth Engine conference and ended up meeting and building a deep friendship with Morgan Crowley from McGill University in Canada. We were able to gather all the women at the conference for our first Real Ladies of Landsat meetup, and that's really when we knew we had something special on our hands. After that, Morgan and I continued to build our friendship and ideas for Ladies of Landsat, and the rest is really history. That being said, we don't do this alone. We are built from organizers and we're all volunteers that participate as much or as little as we can or are able to. The community wouldn't be what it is today without all of these fantastic women and others around the world contributing to this space. Going back to that original mission statement, the question is, how is this achievable? Two central tenants help guide our values and decisions. Uh, when we think about what we wanna do next for Ladies of Landsat. And that's a bottom-up amplification and representation of female and underrepresented voices in Earth observation. And the second, which is a little bit of a bigger hill to climb, is calling for action and awareness from the top down. And that means asking those in power and with power to help change the landscape. Here we ask our active allies, and active allies are people who are not necessarily in these underrepresented groups, or but may be in leadership roles and have influence in the field. We ask them to be advocates for edging EO closer to equality. And we really think that means more than just retweeting, you know, something that Ladies of Landsat or others have shared. Really, one of the biggest things our active allies can do is ask who's in the room, and then trying to ensure as much inclusive and representation as possible when you look around the room and it's just not meeting those representation marks. So I said we're trying to change the landscape, but you know, what does the landscape look like now? There's a lot of false narratives that really color uh, women in this field in a negative light. Some of those include the concept that 
there just aren't enough women. You know, we don't have enough female candidates or underrepresented candidates um, in order to choose the best candidate. It just happens that men come to the top, and that's why they're in those leadership roles. Another one is that women just aren't publishing enough. They aren't getting enough done, and that's why they aren't cited in um, in my my publication or someone else's. And then the last one, which is really more insidious, is that women have different priorities and just aren't as productive as men or other groups. And that's why you know we don't see women cited or represented in these higher level um, research roles, leadership roles, and um, you know, they don't have as much influence in the field up until now. We want to ask, why is this happening? Why, you know, why do we have all these narratives that continue to be perpetuated even in the year 2021 when we know a lot of this is false? And we really see that there's an inherent bias that's occurred for decades. And a simple and earth observation way of thinking about this is that we're only extracting data from one multispectral band. Therefore, everything is biased or tinted towards this one point of view. In this case, that point of view might just be that, you know, there aren't enough women and they're not productive enough and that's why we don't see them in the literature or in leadership roles around the world in earth observation. When you remove that filter, the landscape becomes more vibrant, diverse, complex, and representative of so many more points of view. And that's really what we're trying to accomplish with Ladies of Landsat. When Morgan and I first started, we began by simply casting a wide net to see how many ladies of Landsat were out there waiting and excited for this community. And to our delight, the answer was a lot. And it really did shoot down that first narrative that there just aren't enough women in remote sensing or earth observation. The point was, you're just not looking hard enough. Building that community up, we've been able to hold regular networking events, first in person, but then that was sidetracked by COVID a little bit. So now online, these events have become to be called geomixers. And that's where folks can come and informally chat with a wide range of Earth observation folks and just get to know the community a little bit better. And I promise you, it looks a lot different than what you might see in high-level positions and in the published literature. It's a lot more diverse, a lot more inclusive, and a lot more representative of everybody in the field. It, it's really a fantastic way to get to know um, kind of the field outside of what you might see represented um, by, by the field itself. Going further, we'd really like to change this perception that there just aren't enough women publishing in the field. Towards this, we've created a weekly Manuscript Monday on Twitter to highlight cutting-edge research in the field of Earth observation from around the world. Here, the goal is really to reduce the proven citation gap between genders, and we encourage women to nominate themselves, be proud of their work, and nominate others that they're also proud of. Going further, Morgan and our active ally, Andrew Cutts, have actually created a GitHub Manuscript Monday repository. That's where we're able to host all the Manuscript Monday tweets and their associated articles. So now there is absolutely no excuse for anyone not to cite women or underrepresented groups in their own, own publications and writing. We also work with USGS to tell personal stories of women in Earth observation. It can be so powerful to hear the different way folks arrived at their current positions and the challenges they've faced. What I've personally learned is that career is rarely a linear trajectory. However, that's just not talked about enough, and it can lead to feelings of isolation or failure when you see other successes. We're really trying to normalize that the path you've taken to get you where you are now and the path that you'll take to get you in the where you want to go into the future is all successful. We want to normalize this experience for women. We also deeply hold on to the value that community is better than competition. The success of other women in STEM groups is not our deficit and it is in fact very much the opposite. It helps the community and every other community grow and strengthen and heads towards our mission statement of inclusiveness and representation. Here I've highlighted our sister group, Sisters of SAR, who like us are pushing for more inclusiveness and representation in the field of Earth observation. However, their focus is on synthetic aperture radar. 
Along those lines, I'll note that there are so many fantastic women in STEM groups in this realm. And I'll put in a plug that you'll get to meet some of them if you participate in the Women's Sprint, the hackathon that's happening during the Open Data Cube conference this week. One of the biggest ways so many more women in underrepresented groups are able to utilize Earth observation is through the cloud infrastructure that groups have built around the world, including the Open Data Cube. This lowers the cost to entry to utilize Earth observation and decision making, allowing some of the world's most vulnerable, who are often women and underrepresented populations, utilize this type of data to enact real change. Morgan and I have written several articles and done podcasts if you'd like to learn a bit more about us and our missions. I've included those links here. You'll have some fantastic reading and listening for a couple of days if you're interested. I've also included a link to our store here because everybody loves Ladies of Landsat stickers, myself included. I think we also have holographic ones now. But I've also included our Babies of Landsat gear here too. Not only because I think it's really adorable, but because we're trying to normalize the everyday life of women in science. For example, I was recently on a Ladies of Landsat call and telling a new colleague how excited I was that Morgan was on maternity leave with her beautiful new baby. That colleague exclaimed, wow, you know, that's the first time I've heard someone talk positively or excitedly about someone being on maternity leave. And for me, it's that bias again. It's really tinted against women. The odds are stacked against us, but we hope Babies of Landsat helps to come overcome that in a small, baby-sized way and push that EO towards the edge of more inclusiveness and representation. Finally, I'd like to say if you want to be a Lady of Landsat, you're a Lady of Landsat. No questions asked. And we hope that you'll always reach out to us with ideas, help, if you want someone to listen to you, or if you just want to talk. We're always here for you. Thank you so much again to the Open Data Cube for having us here in this space. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out to us on our Twitter. We have an email account. We have a Slack channel if you'd like to connect to us that way. We just opened a Clubhouse account. We're trying to stay hip with the newest technology. So please don't hesitate. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much.